Thanks for joining me. Today I came up with something really cool. Uh, I play tested it and I want to share it with you. It is a lock picking mechanic uh, that gives your players a hands on approach to lock picking and it is usable for literally any type of tabletop RPG. Okay, so let's take a look at it. First, what I want to do is break down the steps of how the mechanic works. Then I'm going to dive into it and give a little bit more explanation to clarify anything that may be missing. So let's just go through the steps first of how this mechanic works. You take a grid that has uh, four columns and six rows. Now, you'll see that there is at the top an accentuated row for the first four boxes and you're going to want to keep that you're going to want to accentuate that because what that is is the combination to the lock so when the lock has been solved that's where the final combination will be all right so step one you create your grid step two you are going to want to determine the degree for which your player has succeeded at their lock picking skill and correlate that to a die now what does that mean? If a player succeeds really, really well, and uh, you know they can crack this lock with their eyes closed, great. Uh, what you would do is you would then select a D4, uh, and then it it goes up in gradients of how difficult it is by the shape of the die based on how they perform. So if they didn't do you know super super well and and they still passed it, you might want to use a six. If the player uh, did worse than that, an eight. Um, and then continuing to move up a 10 and 12 respectively, 12 being the most difficult, okay? And so after you've identified the die in step two, step three is to place the four die, and we'll use D4 for this example, uh, on, our, uh, on, our, on our map here. And you place the four die up top in the area where the combination is set. And as the game master, you are going to pick that combination. So in your head, you might think, okay, this is a four-sided die. The combination has to be any numbers one through four. So you might think one, let's keep it simple, one, two, three, four, okay? Just to keep it very easy, okay? And so the player is going to place their four uh, D4 at the top of the combination, and they have now uh, with each row, one, two, three, four, five subsequent rows underneath this top row, they have five tries to figure out how this lock picking mechanism works. So to wrap up step three, lay out your dice at the top of the row, and as a game master, select the combination you're going to go with. Whether that be, you know, one, 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 two, three, four, whatever you want to make it, you're going to make that combination, set it in your head, put it aside, and the player is going to use this tool to try and figure out the combination. Okay, step four. Now is the fun part where the player gets to make their first guess at what the combination is. So they move the die down to the second row here underneath the combination, uh, the combination row. And so let's say I pick something, uh, you know, just kind of simple to give me an idea of what it could be. I'll do one, 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 okay? One, 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 one. Now, as the game master, I'm going to tell the player in this fourth step which columns are correct. And if it is correct, that die is going to be moved to the space uh, where the combination uh, is set. So obviously in the first column, it's one, and that is correct because our combination is one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna move the one to the top and I'm gonna leave the remaining die. Now, the player might wanna be taking notes at this point because obviously for the slots two, three, four, columns two, three, and four, the answer is not going to be uh, one, two, one, okay? So let's move on, or a uh, one, one, and one. So the player is going to then uh, move down to the next row and give it a try with the remaining three dice. Now let's say they do something like two, two and two again they're going to find that the uh one of the die is correct and we're going to move it up to the top to the correct combination and they are left with two die and they'll repeat this process until they get it correct now you may be looking at this and thinking well you know that's pretty easy 
Well, that should be. This is what the easiest lock looks like. This is a lock that, you know, any cunning rogue or thief could open with their eyes shut. And so, you know, with five rows to figure it out, it's inevitable that they'll, they'll get the correct combination to crack the lock. However, let's look past this and apply these four steps to a more challenging die. Now let's say we switch to D10s. I just happen to have barely enough D10s to do this example. So we'll take a look at that and we'll see how it plays out with D10s. Now, D10s, you can't play the same game, okay, where you just shift it by one number because again, you only have one, two, three, four, five subsequent rows, all right? So step one, we have our grid. Uh, step two, the game master, I've laid out my combination, the die are on the table, and uh, we're gonna just carry on. So the player is going to pick what they think the combination is, but now the range is significantly higher. It could be any number between one and 10. And so uh, the player will have to really be careful what they pick or, or try to uh, take, I would suggest taking notes because it helps you figure out what worked and what didn't work. And there's now sort of a luck component almost, okay? So they might do one, 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 one again, okay? And then they could be completely wrong because my combination might be six, seven, six, seven. All right, let's say, just pulled that number out of the top of my head. And so maybe next time they go, okay, I'm just going to do 7777. Seven, seven, seven. Well, they would find that the two numbers uh, move to the top as they have three subsequent rows to figure out the crack to this combination, okay? And so forth and so on. Uh, another idea that I have played with that I think could work really well is uh, adding rows to the table uh, when you have a more challenging lock. Um, you could say, well, I'm going to give you, because you succeeded so well on your roll, I'm going to give you three additional roll, rows. So the player who finishes through those uh, five rows will get two more at the end to try and crack the lock because they did so well on their skill challenge. Everything within this mechanic, within this mini game, correlates directly to the success or the failure of the player character. And that's what I think makes it so wonderful. And you'll find the players at your table, hopefully, this is what I had uh, as an experience, is that they're looking at this and they're saying, oh man, try this out, try that out. And there's some level of investment because what starts off as, okay, you crack the lock, great job, the door is open turns into, oh, we gotta try to get that three, or why don't you try four? And now you're seeing players invested in other <laughs> players. Um, it's a hands-on approach, so that changes up the dynamic of the table. Very simple to understand, low learning curve, and uh, just a great tool to spice up D&D &D that takes very low effort. And that's what I love about it, is creating things for Dungeons and Dragons that have very, very low effort with high yielded results. Also, I'd like to just give a quick shout out to uh, Felbar Shop of Curiosities and Occult, our book that just dropped. Um, we have shipped our first order. It is going to be out very soon through our website and on Amazon.com, so please stay posted for that. Thank you so much for everything you do to support us. Give this mechanic a try, let us know how it works out, and thanks again for watching. So Dr. Weaver